the talk. Okay. So Eva, thank you very much for the invitation for the introduction. I, before starting, I also would like to thank all the people involved in the organization of this very nice conference on mathematics and your science, especially in these days. And as I can see here from the title of my presentation, I'll be, I'll be talking about Hawks processes and their connection with the neural field equations. So uh, <clears throat> all the results presented here uh, are based on two papers. Uh, recently published in the SPA journal. So they are product of joint works with Aline Duarte from Sao Paulo, Eva Lecherbach from, from Paris, and Julia Chevalier from uh, Grenoble. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> what are the main contributions of our work? So uh, the first one from the first paper, I would say that we established rigorously a relationship between mean field limits of a spatially structured Hox processes uh, with uh, neural field equations. And in the second paper, I would say that uh, our main contribution is to complement the results from the first paper by studying the fluctuations of uh, spatially structured Hox processes and connecting it with the stochastic neural field equations. So why are these results interesting? So as, as Valentin uh, mentioned, imagine that you want to you wanna understand the properties of a very large networks and then uh, one way of doing this is through simulations. But then depending on how, how large is your network and how complex is your model that you want to implement in your algorithm, this can be very high computational uh, demand, demanding. So an alternative way is then to try to simplify uh, the model, to try to derive simplified descriptions of, our, of our, uh, the model and this is where the mean field limit theory comes in. So, uh, and even with these simplified descriptions, you can, you can provide useful insights of how the activity of the network is related to the underlying uh, neural circuitry. Okay. Uh, and as uh, some of you might know, uh, although this theory of, uh, theory of mean field limits is very nice, there is a, a huge uh, or a, a big uh, downside, which is they, uh, at the limit, when you derive your macroscopic uh, equation uh, describing uh, how would uh, your network evolve uh, when it's very large, they, tra they treat the neurons as if, as if they were uh, independent. And then if you look uh, at uh, real data, you'll see even if your network is very large, you, you see that uh, the, the you might have neurons which are uh, still correlated. And this is uh, known uh, in the literature as the finite size effects in a way to try to account uh, uh, for this finite size effects is try to, to, to study the fluctuations. Uh, and that's why uh, fluctuations are, are very, uh, uh, are important, okay? So in the rest of my talk, I will try to define the, the precisely the, the Hox uh, model we use and then relate the uh, uh, relate the results of mean field limits with neural field equations and then I will go through uh, fluctuations of uh, this uh, stochastic model okay so Hox processes they are just point process on, on R let's say R plus they were introduced by Hox in the 70s and very recently, it became a very popular model uh, in uh, many areas, including finance and neuroscience. And then just to quote some, some, some to, to, to cite some uh, literature involving neural modeling uh, via Hox processes, I'd like to stress the paper from uh, Patricia Renaud-Bohe and collaborators where they de de developed uh, lasso methods and then there is a paper from Shia Brown and collaborators where they uh, derive some concentration equalities for second order statistics. And then the paper from Suzanne that lives in, in Evla Chebra where they have this mean field description exhibiting oscillatory behavior. And then there are papers from uh, Julien Chevalier uh, where he uh, study, uh, derives some mean field descriptions and also study the fluctuations uh, uh, of uh, age structured Hox process, as Valentin just mentioned in his talk. 
And more recently, there is a paper from uh, Antonio Galvez, Enrico Pressucci, Avala Chabra, and Christophe uh, Puzza, where they also derive a mean field description uh, modeling short-term memory, okay? So let me, let me uh, introduce a notation and give you the precise uh, definition of a Hox, of at least the example of Hox process that we consider. So I have a network with N neurons. For each neuron, we have an associated spike train. So I will denote this, denote this by capital NI. So the, 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 the marks in red here would represent uh, the, the spikes of neural I. So this spike train induces a point measure, which gives masses, uh, which is concentrated on the spike trains of I. And usually people describe how, uh, um, they describe the evolution of the, the process in terms of an intensity process. So lambda I of T here would represent so this is called the intensity of neural I. Uh, and then uh, uh, lambda I of T would represent the probability to have a spike uh, of observing a, a spike of I at time T. And, 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 the, and the important thing here is that this quantity here is random. It depends on the past history of spikes. And uh, in this talk, I'll be focused on uh, on, a, on a specific example. So lambda I here for me is F of UIT, so U here is the membrane potential of time T. And there is, uh, and so the, the, we assume here that the, the, the UIT, it changes through time due to spikes as follows. So there is this term here indicating that there is a decay, an exponential decay with rate alpha. Okay, each neuron is being attracted to, 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 to zero in this sense. And then there is the second term here where, uh, we, we, we introduce the, the, the dependence of, uh, uh, of the model. So essentially here, it's saying that for whenever a neuron J spikes, it gives uh, a quantity W of XJ, XI. So XJ here will be the position of the neuron J. I am assuming that for simplicity, this is, uh, it's, uh, xj will be j over n so this is everything in the units uh, in the unit interval and then at, at the end what neural i is feeling is an average effect of all those uh, uh, weighted spikes okay and u0 here will represent the initial condition so uh, just some terminology people call this f a firing rate could be a logistic function function for instance the W here is called, uh, or would model the synaptic couplings, uh, will be a, a nice example is the Mexican half function. Uh, here is just a, this U0 here will correspond to the initial condition uh, of, our, our, of our process, and the alpha here will be the, the leakage rate, okay? Um, and just for the remaining part of my talk, I will denote NI of T, the number of spikes of neural I, uh, 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 on the interval zero t, okay. So let's let's discuss very briefly the results we might have, we might we might able to to prove uh, 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 and relate this with uh, uh, neural field equations. So <clears throat> the question of interest here is to uh, understand uh, uh, the convergence of this point process as the size of network uh, gets larger and larger, okay. So uh, there is a, uh, uh, I would say, a sort of law of large numbers in the following in sense. So this will be the, our preliminary result. So if I take the sum over n i of t, so uh, and divide by n, so this will be the uh, um, uh, an average of observed spiking, uh, uh, spiking. Uh, in the my network up to time t, and then we can show that this in fact converges to a given number, and then moreover we can identify this number as an integral over x here would be the positions. Okay, remember that the, the positions are co all, all uh, contained in the interval zero one, and for each x I integrated uh, from time zero to t a function like lambda of x. So we identify this number and we represent it as this. 
And then we, it turns out from our analysis that this lambda t of x can be written as a function of uh, u t x, okay? And this u t x solves uh, a scalar uh, near of the equation, okay? So in, this, in, a, in a nutshell, this equation is just describing uh, uh, the macroscopic uh, behavior of the, the point process that I just defined. So you see here, there is this minus alpha ut, it's this uh, exponential decay. And then there is this known uh, linear term here, it's telling me that uh, uh, continuously, uh, the neuron is, is, is being uh, receiving spikes from the others. So this would represent the fraction of neurons spiking at time t uh, at position y. And then, I'm, uh, and then whenever it spikes, it gives you w of y to x. And then I'm integrating this over all possible positions, OK? And of course, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this sense, uit can be uh, understood as the main reputation at time t of a typical neural located in position x embedded in an infinite network of neurons. And uh, so this type of equations has been introduced uh, uh, by Amari, Wilson and Cohen in the 70s, okay? So this is a first uh, uh, description of a network at the limit. And then there, it can be much more precise. So for each X, if I denote N bar of X as a Poisson process with intensity lambda TX, okay? And I denote the n bar t as the number of points of this process as, uh, on zero t. We can also show that if I compare the number of points of my Hox processes at each possible time, and for each neuron, we can show that this goes to zero as uh, square root one of square root of n. Okay, so in some sense, we are approximating our Hox processes by a family of Poisson, non-homogeneous Poisson point processes with this lambda, uh, with this intensity lambda t of x, okay? And from this uh, type of result, we can also show that if I look to the, for each neuron, I compare my, the, the evolution of my, the, the main propagation of neuron i with uh, the neural field equation, if I look the L1 distance for each neuron, this also goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, uh, and here the expectation is, is just is, is taken with the uh, with respect to the randomness present in the jumps. Okay, so this is somehow is a much better description uh, that we uh, uh, than just the law of large numbers that we saw before. Okay, so in some sense I'm saying that uh, 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 the ut here the solution of the mean field uh, the the neural field equation could be an approximation uh, for the finite uh, size system, uh, UNT, UNT, okay? And I, as I mentioned in the, in the very beginning of my talk, uh, by doing this mean field approximation, you, 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 you and, and then you treat the neurons at the limit as if they were independent. So meaning that if you take the cor correlation, if you want to study the correlation of two pairs here of neurons, and then you study the correlation as a function of n, and then you see that at the limit, this will be zero, okay? And then another question at this point is, can you provide a finer approximation, okay? And that's why we study fluctuations. So uh, let me introduce some notation. So I will call the, you see, uh, I compare the ut minus the solution of the neural field equation, and then I'm scaling this by uh, square root of n. So I'm amplifying this difference. And I call this eta n of xi. And my idea here is to try to give an heuristic argument to derive, uh, uh, to derive uh, uh, an equation that this eta should uh, uh, satisfy when n uh, is very large, okay? So recall that at this, uh, as zero, these two guys uh, are equal. So, uh, so uh, eta at zero will be zero, okay? So I just recall you the, the, the evolution for the Hox process for the UIT is this, and the evolution equation for the neural field equation, okay? 
So let me just do the first approximation is just to change this integral as a sum like this. Okay, so Riemann approximation. And then if I uh, sum, so if I, if I compare with eta, I take the derivative with respect to t here, and you see there is this minus alpha in both sides. So this uh, gives me back again the, the eta. And then I have this uh, sum here, one over n, uh, w, n square, and then I have the n j here, and then I have f of u t x j here. Okay. So if I add and subtract this term here, okay, I get immediately uh, this equation. So I just rewrote it. Okay. And now I, I split it in two parts. So this nj and fuj here and f big u with uh, f small u. Okay. And then if I apply holder, a uh, holder, sorry, uh, Taylor, uh, expansion here, you see that this term can be written as the derivative times the difference. Since I multiply by square root of n, I recover uh, uh, the eta n of t at the position uh, xj, okay? And then, <clears throat> so this is uh, just explained. And then uh, since I will rewrote this as an integral equation, uh, I'm just uh, want to introduce some notations. So I will call, so if I integrate this term from zero to t, uh, I will be clear in a minute why I'm doing this. And then I multiply this by e uh, of uh, alpha s here in, in this big parenthesis is call this expression integrate over uh, ds. And I call this m and t of xi because this depends at the end depends on xi. So if you do this, I replace uh, this approximate approximation here, you get the eta, so I'm integrating here, right? Should be uh, this integral from zero to t, e minus alpha t minus s, because I have this exponential loss. So here you recognize exactly this term when I replace this difference by a prime. Uh, and since I should have this e to the minus t s, uh, and in my definition, I have only S here, I also get this extra term, okay? Uh, and what the important here is this term here, um, that's why I wrote in this, uh, uh, purposely in this way, this term here is a martingale, you can check, okay? And then from this, it should be, uh, if you believe that this converts to some object, uh, and then I apply, I can apply sort of central, uh, Martingale central limit theorem. And then I obtain as n goes to infinity, uh, an equation like this. So gamma t would be, represent the limit of the eta. And then you can uh, uh, recognize that I just uh, replaced the previous equation, the previous sum by an equal over all the positions. And here I have the e minus alpha t times this uh, uh, term here, which would call a Gaussian term, okay? Which comes from this Martingale central limit theorem, okay? So this term here is a Gaussian with mean zero and there is, they are correlated. So they can, you can check that it's, uh, this is the, uh, the correlation. And you see that the, 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 the function w uh, plays an important role here, okay? And then uh, since this is a Gaussian, there is correlated, we, we, you can rewrite after some work, this term here as an integral with respect to a, a, of this sort, with respect to a Gaussian random field. And to make sense of this equation uh, of this object, and then to make sense of this equation, we use this Walsh theory of uh, stochastic integration, okay? Uh, I won't have time to discuss the tales, but uh, we can do it later if you want. Uh, so in conclusion from the heuristics, I hope it's clear that asymptot asymptotically, the vector of this ethos, so the vector of my fluctuations can be described as a solution of the SPD of the following form. So I'm writing not in the integral form, but in the, uh, uh, in the differential form. So, uh, and then you, 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 got, you would get this equation, okay? Where uh, this is, uh, this is uh, 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 a stochastic term, okay? 
and this uh, big W here is a Gaussian random field. So, uh, so in the last four minutes that I have, I just would like to, to um, show you some consequence of this result. <clears throat> so, um, so the solution of the neural field equation, as I just said, so this is the conclusion up to, the, up to this point, can be, can be thought as a, an approximation, a zeroth order approximation of our finite system. And then um, if I define my process uh, the, um, Y and T as the U plus uh, one over square root of N gamma T, so gamma will be the solution of the previous equation, I can, this can be seen as a, so this is a finer approximation and we could call this as a first order approximation of finite system, just a name, okay? And then if you look at the equation that uh, the, the, this Y process satisfies, it's uh, not difficult to check. So if you remember the, 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 the equation that the, the small u satisfies, it's minus uh, alpha u, then the integral with respect to positions W F u. And then the other terms are uh, the terms coming from the, the SPD gamma, okay? Uh, and then uh, if you think about it, this guy here, this term here can be well approximated by uh, F of Y and T Y, okay, by definition. Um, and this guy U here, it's also well approximated by this, uh, 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 I can replace it by this Y N of T. And when you do this replacement, uh, you, so I'm just uh, say it again here. So when you do these replacements, the equation that you get is a, a stochastic version of the original uh, anero field equation. So it can be written like this. So you forgot about this stochastic term. This would be exactly the stochastic uh, neural field equation coming from the mean field limits. And then by studying the fluctuations, we, we can derive a, a stochastic version of this uh, neural field equations neural field equation. And, uh, and, and it's a very nice result that we got is first, we can make sense of this equation by using the, the Walsh theory. And by the way, there is a paper from uh, um, Olivier, Olivier Forgeras where uh, it explains very nice how this theory could be applied. Um, uh, the Auch theory could apply, be applied uh, for, for make sense of those type of uh, neural field equations, stochastic neural field equations. And as, a f uh, as our final result, uh, so under some assumptions like F, uh, U and uh, W are smooth, okay? And uh, F, the derivative of F and the second derivative of F are bounded. We can show that uh, if we compare this, the solution of this phi, with the, with the uh, narrow field equation. So this is uh, uh, the square root of the L2 norm of this is one over N, the case with one over N. And then the V and the Y, they, they, they also, they, they, the, their distance is, the error is one over N essentially, okay? So I hope that's uh, uh, clear enough. And uh, that's it that I, that I want to share with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guillaume, for this talk. Uh, oh, I have to look at the questions. Is it possible to learn W rather than fixing it? For example, assuming. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a, a good question. So I somehow I've, I, I keep, uh, asking, I keep myself, I keep, I'm keeping asking myself this question also uh, to other people. I do believe that it should be possible in some sense because once we have, once we have this uh, equation here, we can try to, to do what we do in statistics, uh, which is called the confidence interval somehow. Uh, I'm just, I mean, very, I'm, I'm being very imprecise here, but uh, I, I would say for the moment, it's not so clear how to do this, but I would say that once we develop a well theory to study the properties of this equation and et cetera, uh, we can try to do 
as what people call in statistics a confidence interval. And from this, maybe we could infer uh, this W. Okay. I don't know if that answers the question, but uh, that's what I, what I have. <laughs> so there are two related questions then I would say by Lucas Vesses and James McLaurin. So what is the distribution of the Gaussian random field? Is it space time white noise? And same kind of question by, by James. Okay. It's yeah, yeah, uh, oops. So this is Gaussian random field. Uh, if you, if you, so, uh, if I go back here, let me go back here, or maybe here, it's in. You see, this is just, uh, this, when I, when we wrote this, as, a, as a, um, an integral with respect to Gaussian random field, is just to say that this would represent the, the Gaussian uh, stochastic term here, which is our Gaussian process. Okay, so I should say, so this is a Gaussian, so we can have some regularity properties of the solutions by exploring this Walsh theory. Okay, and then, uh, uh, if you if you look at this in the Fujihara's paper, uh, I guess what is what I'm calling Gaussian random field and what he calls there is exactly the white noise uh, process. Okay, uh, and then uh, so um, I don't know uh, does this answer uh, the question or? Uh... I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Julien has also it's confirming yeah thanks thanks julian and of course i should say that uh, so this is just some heuristics uh, the rigorous result we we had to define this a uh, uh, through measure valid measure valid processes and etc so it's a bit more complicated but uh, all the details you can you can find on our, our, on the jo uh, joint paper with uh, julian okay yeah. So we have been working, Guillaume, about same kinds of processes, but with reset at each spiking time. Would it be easy to extend your work to the to the framework of, I mean, of neurons that have that go back to zero once they spiked? Yeah. So uh, I have been discussing with Julia uh, questions like, what should we do next? And uh, he can confirms uh, he can confirms this. And I, I was uh, asking me to um, that I think my impression is that it will be possible to join um, to unify the two point of views in the sense that I could consider a model, I guess, I could consider a model with the spatial structure and also a, a model where we keep track of the last spike in time, the age, what's called the age, right? I, I guess it should be possible to. Uh, to derive from infield descriptions of models with this type of, uh, um, with these ingredients. And also it should be possible to derive uh, 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 an S SPDs to, uh, to, 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 to explain how this, the, the, the process, uh, how, how to, to explain the fluctuations of the, the process with respect to the, the, its mean field limit. Are there any other questions from the audience? Do you see any waved hands, Tilo? No, I don't see the, no, okay. You, you were speaking about one last second because we have to, to switch to the next talk, but you were speaking about simulations. Did you do some of some? I know uh, that. Yeah, so, uh, so this you can ask for, uh, I mean, I'm sure that Julia has implemented some simulations of the, I mean, because you can, you can uh, simulate this neural field equation and compare, compare it with the simulations coming from the, from, from the point process here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have the pictures here. So this is for sure. It can be, can be done. I mean, it's, a, it's already done. Uh, but for the moment, uh, we don't have simulations for, for, uh, to see how, I mean, to, to better see this, this fluctuations and how, and how, um, yeah, so, so we don't have simulations to, to, 
to better see uh, the behavior of this, uh, the fluctuation of the solutions of this gamma t. Okay. Thank you very much, Guillaume, for